Hey, hello! Today, Tama and I are out on a beautiful camping trip in near the Rocky Mountains. We're just south of Hinton, and I thought it'd be a good time to do a one year review of the Taxa Tiger Moth. Things we like, things that have been issues, and just overall my uh, opinion of it after a year of decent use. What I'll do is just walk around it and talk it through and let you know what I think, and what's been good, and what's been challenging. So, First off, from back here, it's a unique look, as you can see. When you're driving down the road, you will get people that will be coming up on your left, because I'm always in the slow lane with this, and they'll be flying up, you can see, and then they stop, and they'll take about 30 seconds to pass you as they check out what this thing is, because there are not many of them around. It's kind of fun. You also, when you get gas or go to the grocery store, invariably will have somebody come talk to you so you almost need to plan that in for time because it'll take 10 minutes every time you stop people ask what it is does it pop open always ask that does it pop open it's so small no it does not pop open uh, one of the things that I really like is the ARB awning sitting off the back here it's fairly easy to deploy I can do it by myself it's definitely easier with two people but it gives you just the right amount of shelter to cover the cook area uh, in the rain or shade, either one's as important, and has a screen room that connects on the four or three walls really, no floor. Haven't used that yet. Probably we'll get to that someday when it's more mosquito-y. The side door you see there that flings open like a gullwing door is really cool. It does give you a bit of shelter if you open the door, if you're sleeping and it's raining and you don't have the awning up. You open that and you at least have a little bit of shelter just to get out, pull on your pants because getting dressed in there is acrobatics. Uh, so that gall wing door is nice. Or you leave it down and you can just come in and out under the awning here if you have that open. I like this kitchen design. It's easy, it's handy. It all just slides away. I've got it in the open position right now. Here's the drawer open. That is something that could have been done better. The drawer locks into place so it won't close. But the lock is only on this rail, which allows this rail to slide. So what you get is it wiggles. If both slides had locked, then when it's out, it wouldn't be able to do the back and forth because that slide would be locked. That's just a small thing. It doesn't really make a difference, but... That would be nice. So close it, it just tucks away. Just like that. I like it, it's nice and tidy. And then it's also nice if you're stopping for a quick lunch or something, pull out the drawer, you got your cooler on the front, easy access to pull together a sandwich, something like that if you're on the road. It really does need an additional work surface. So we just have this, I think it's a two by uh, two by four table it's roughly countertop height and that is really you really need that because if you're working on the stove and the cutting board it's a small area the water container is nice and convenient so there's no plumbing in this thing but you basically have a little cold water spigot right there when you get this the spigot that comes with it is garbage I wish I'd gone to a brass one, but I just ordered this plastic one and put it in. It's a bit better than what you got. The one that they send really does not work. So that's something that, bit of an issue. But overall, this backspace here is quite nice. In the wind, I'll hang a tarp just there, just to provide a windbreak. And then you, uh, you're you not having sand blown in your face if you're in a sandy area, dust, just that kind of stuff, it's nice. Um, generally, I go to the mountains. This is a little bit more tame where we are today because that's a forestry road right there. But I've taken this thing down quad trails. For a frame that is only 1,300 pounds dry, which means it's built out of fairly lightweight materials, it has been quite robust. The amount of bouncing that goes along with the rocks that we go through and the ruts and trees and stumps just dragging this thing over all sorts of ground is very impressive it's got good tires 
15 inch rim, nice knobbly tires you can see there. Fairly good grip. Tire size is 235.75 R15. It's an ST tire, which I think means it's a standard trailer. Not 100% sure. One thing that does happen, and this isn't even bad because it's been dry, but you'll see the amount of mud this tire kicks up. Uh, that is often full of mud, which of course is your door, your step into the side door. So if you use the back one, it's a bit better because it's protected. Something that does happen though with that step is I back it into ditches. So I've actually bent it or clearance if I'm trying to get over a ditch. It has some tight angles, you can kind of see. I've bent it as the angle of the trailer tilts up at the front. So that's not ideal. Stabilizer jacks are pretty standard, nothing special. The axle is from what I understand, not that expensive. It's just a torsion axle, no brand name or anything like that. But it's worked. It's been solid and this has been put through the rigors of trails. The electric brakes, electric? The standard brakes, I guess they are electric, uh, work great. I have the Red Arc tow controller. Super intuitive, works really well. Inside, I've left it just kind of as is. This is what it looks like when you use it. The bed's in the out position. That does slide up, you've probably seen pictures, into a couch. I don't really fit in there to sit in it, I'm too tall. Um, I'm 6'1". If I sit right here and kind of right up against it, I can do that. But then the netting there, my head hits the netting. So we just don't use it as a couch. We sit outside. That's why I come out to these places. So the bed basically ends up, you shove your bedding to the front, and then this also ends up as another work surface. Down here, I've got these sturdy recycle bins, and that kind of becomes pantry. I've got three of those, and the food that doesn't fit into the kitchen container, which looks like this, goes into the recycle bins. There's a lot of space underneath here if you were just packing for one or two people for a quick overnight. That would probably be adequate. Under the breadboard or the cutting board is a... Uh, these cleps are pretty clever. I like them. That's where we put all of our pots. And just different pantry items as well. When I open this up, when I'm actually cooking, I take the breadboard put it there and then I have a spot to put things while still allowing access to what's below. The windows on these quite good they're delicate I would say generally but you have a screen option as it is now you have a blackout blind option and then you can also open it up so that you can get at the, the latches and this window will open up to there. The side window, which I have in the open position right now, the door is, um, basically is the similar size, type of window. Good size window, lots of airflow. You also have a good window at the front. It's a little bit smaller. You can kind of see it there behind all the bedding. The fan there is simple on off, a little bit noisy, but I don't mind that for the white noise because often if you're at a campground or you're in the, the bush and there's other people near you, that kind of drowns out the noise they might be making. It's got LED lighting. The switches are here. That's the back, main inside, front inside, reading lamp inside. So you won't really see it, but it's a red light in the front at night. So I guess night vision, don't quite get that. It has a white light in the front, and then you'll see the main LED light here. These are quite bright, and they're nice too. They're yellowish, which I like. And then the outdoor light is that guy there. It is full on yellow. I guess it's a bug light, so it's not supposed to attract bugs. It's not very bright, it, but it does give you a little bit of a light wash over the kitchen area. The battery, it's a Group 27 AGM. 
I'll drain it in with the fan and charging in a few nights. So I just bought cheapo Costco 100 watt solar panel and that seems to keep me topped up as much as I need. I put a, an extension cord on it because one thing that is a bit goofy about the solar is it's wired for ZAMP they say and really the only difference between ZAMP from what I can understand and other chargers is this connector is reverse polarity for ZAMP. So I just wired in my solar panel with a charge control backward and it works. You've got your shore power here, the 30 amp. It comes with about a 15 foot cord to plug it in at home, which is nice. The nose box is quite nice. I keep all my tools in there. All the, the drill that I use for the levelers, tools, straps, things like that. Had one issue with it the other night which was we found ourselves jackknifed. Couldn't go forward, couldn't go back, and where is that? Look at that big dent there. The nose, or the corner. That corner there was driven <laughs> right into there. Kind of a bummer. Uh, I carry extra gas because I lose Towing this, if the Jeep is empty, I'm 30 miles per gallon on the highway. With this, I'm 15. So when I go to the mountains, I take extra gas because no gas stations, imagine that. That, the tire carrier, is in the wrong spot. The breakover angle for what I do, I'm constantly going over arches that are steeper than what that can handle there. The tire sits down below the frame a good 12 inches so that is constantly getting hit when I'm off-road not a great place for that it would be better to have it maybe mounted on the side here I'll have to figure something out with that uh, this carrier rack up here is quite nice throwing you can throw firewood up there it's solid I think it's powder coated steel and it's quite solid. It says 300 pounds. Wouldn't want to be putting that up there. It's quite high up for articulation. If you're just on the highway though, that's fine. This area underneath the gas cans where I've just got a Plano bin is great as well. I put the Plano bin there and then my cooler, which is in the back of the Jeep right now because it's just Tamla and I, uh, sits on top of it. So when the girls are with us, the cooler goes here and it fits perfectly, allows us access to the cooler. Got tarps, axe, different items that are in there. I put the high lift jack there, which I've only had to use once, which was two nights ago. Thank goodness I had it. This is the Trek model, I believe. The Tiger Moss Trek model. So there's a number of items that you get on this one that you would not get on the base model. So the kitchen organization, this, the drawer you get on the base model, but you don't get any of the wood. Uh, you don't get the stove, you don't get the water can, you don't get the awning, you don't get the roof rack, you don't get the nose box, you don't get the cargo carrier. So it's quite an upgrade. I think it's worth it to get up to the, the trek for what I do. The Thule bars that come with it work. I put a car topper up there for longer trips with the full family. But this Thule design, this is not a Tiger Moth problem, but this Thule design here, is horrible for attaching. You don't know if you've got a solid connect, especially that awning. I have to take the awning off to get it into the garage. So that means every time I go out, I'm taking that off and putting it on one cycle like that. And I've kind of learned how to tell, but it is not a good system. I think that could be done way better. The side here, sometimes I'll carry the extra gas there. You can see there's a ring. I carry my 20 pound propane there for a longer trip. And the rubbing there is I put a pool, which these are great uh, for just protecting things between the canister and that because I had a rock that got wedged between the canister and it dug into the panel. So the pool noodle rubbed the paint off the sticker, but it keeps the rocks from getting wedged in there. It has a 12 volt outlet here, so if you have a fridge freezer, which I want, 
you could put it here. I'm thinking of when I can get that one day, having a custom built enclosure to keep the fridge clean and then have it slide out that side. And then I can also just plug it in right there to run off of the battery. Uh, that is something, the clean issue. The Jeep, I don't really have mud flaps on here. So this, the front of this gets just pounded with rocks. You can't see it now because it's dirty, but it's like this has been sandblasted and the whole surface is pockmarked. But on if it's a muddy weekend, something like that, a muddy trip, this here will be covered in mud. Just covered. Like I said, today's a relatively dry experience. We just had some puddles we went through and it still looks like that. As I said, the awning has to come off. Uh, I believe it is to the highest point. This is 80 two inches I believe and my garage door opening is 84 so that just fits the awning does not so that's a little bit of a extra task you got to do when you go out oh rivets yeah that's something that hasn't been great I've had to replace a couple of these because they've just they wiggle themselves out all the the vibration and the movement that the frame gets when you're off-road if you don't go off-road, you probably won't have an issue, but um, I'm constantly tweaking this frame or stressing it, I guess, and some of the rivets have come out. The other thing that I've noticed, I'll just show you here inside, these bolts here, that screw and that screw hold the frame to the floor, which is just plywood. This bolt goes through the plywood and into the steel frame below and holds everything together. All of these have come loose. All four corners and the different fastening points, they've come loose. So I've taken them out. I've filled the hole with epoxy, filled the thread with epoxy, and basically have epoxied this thing together. I don't know if that's just the movement of off-road. Had to do it to these as well. You can see the the shininess there but I had to do it because otherwise I was gonna lose the frame screen protection so the screens just roll up here and then come down the screens will velcro so they stay closed but as you can see there's a velcro point there's a velcro point there's a velcro point so a little one there and a little one there even though you see it all the way across here they don't give you full Velcro connections. It's got that and that. And then on the inside, a couple of spots. So it, really for that to be totally effective, it would be a good idea to run a full strip of Velcro all the way around. That would really make it work a lot better or some sort of magnetic system because that is a steel frame. That would help. This door, when you're in there, it's nice to just let the door go. I put this piece of paracord in to take the stress of the door swinging open, because if you just let it go with just the gas strut, it puts a lot of yank on these points here. And I think over time that would probably wear out. So I put the rope in there. Now I can open it up in the morning and just let it go and that gets caught by that. Another thing that I had to do, these fasteners in here to hold the, the latch system in, they came loose. So I took them out and put Loctite in there so I can still get those out if I had to, but now they're, they're kind of locked in there. If you do that, be aware, you can kind of get a look at this panel. This is the inside. So this whole assembly here, it's one inch right there. You have a thin aluminum skin. Where is it? Right there. And then that's filled with foam. It's just styrofoam and another aluminum skin. So if you're through screwing or screwing through this panel, don't over tighten because you will just collapse the foam. So the electrical has two USB outlets a 12 volt cigarette lighter outlet. You've got your charge reader status. Simple panel. 
And then you have four 120 volt regular outlets for if you're on shore power only, the way it comes wired up. There's your electrical disconnect. Carbon monoxide, which is a bit high because I believe carbon monoxide is heavier than air. So by the time that sets off, you might be sleeping. It also has a smoke detector, which works quite well around the campfire. A fire extinguisher right at the back door. Nice and handy to grab. I like maps, so I put a map on the wall. There's a lot of storage under the front. You can see up there, you can reach at some of the stuff in there. And it's quite, it's probably four feet from that to the front. You have that, the full width, two compartments, the full width. However, it's a little impractical to use. Those hatches flip up, but you'd have to pull your bedding out. You'd have to pull out the extra full mattress that, or uh, air mattress that we use, get to that in a second, in order to access the storage while you're actually on your trip. So kind of something that put the stuff there that you're gonna pull out once and leave out for the whole trip. Back to the bed. This is horrible. I'm a pretty big guy. I'm, like I said, 6'1", and well, let's say 250 is a nice slim number for me. Uh, not comfortable. I've heard that many people say, doesn't matter their body shape, this is not comfortable. So we add just a thermarest. This is, I think, a four inch thermarest, and that makes it more comfortable, but a proper mattress would be nice. Probably do that one day. One thing that did happen, when you add this thermarest, your mattress becomes about eight inches thick and they have it set up, there's a headboard there. Your head is really close after your pillows and all that. It's like your face is just six inches down from the ceiling. It just feels cramped. So we actually sleep with our heads at the end, at this end of the trailer, where the roof line, you can see the roof line is higher. Instead of having our heads stuck in that low area, we put them here, much more room, just feels more open and then you're also have your head right by the two windows for better ventilation that same screen i showed you on the back also covers this that's about it we have had this for a year now we've done 42 nights in it as of this trip it has performed nearly flawlessly aside from those items that i told you that i had to fix that really simple diy fixes there have been no issues i've been really impressed with how robust the construction has been, especially in the kind of train I take it. If you're someone who's going to be going on mainly highway trips with the occasional dirt road down to a campground, the, it, no issues for you on this. If you're considering a Taxa Outdoors Tiger Moth, I would say I've been very happy with it. The drawback, probably the biggest drawback is when you're in it at night, it is very tight. If you're going to be dressing and undressing inside with the doors closed, you need to be a bit bendy, which I'm not super bendy. Or just be little. Some people are little. I've met small people. They'd probably be fine in there. I'm really happy with it. If you go buy one, I hope you would be too. Thanks for watching.